Welcome engineering classes. Today we're going to talk about how to make the airfoil that we're going to use for our glider. But first we'll get everything out of the way. Rocking the creeper mug here. Hmm. Full of good coffee. And of course sporting the isolation haircut. Shouldn't call it isolation. Let's instead, let's be dramatic. We have taken a vow of solitude until the pestilence is clear from the land. I like that. It sounds much more heroic. So today we're going to cut out our chosen airfoil into balsa wood so we can start making the wing of our glider. And I've got a new tripod so maybe the camera will be a little bit more stable and we'll adjust that down to our workspace right now. Here we are. Now as sent in by you all students, these were three of the finalists for the airfoils that we wanted to look at. First, the 2312 in the NACA four-digit series. The old standby Cessna still uses it today. It's wide enough to make for a good spar that we can put in to help hold the wing. It doesn't quite have the low speed characteristics that we need. And remember, a glider like this will be flying maybe 15, 20 miles an hour. Something more old fashioned, the 3206, a very thin airfoil as you can see right here, even has the nose dipped down a little bit. There's a little kink right here. This is very old fashioned airfoil and is good for low speed. It is so thin though, it's gonna be hard to make it structurally sound. Now, thicker still, and with an even more bend, remember the first digit is the percent bend. This has a 4% bend at the 40% mark, and it's 12% thick. And as you can see, by moving that aft, we get a very thick airfoil. This would be used maybe for a cargo airplane or a bomber, something like that. This is going to be low speed and high lift. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of drag because it's a thick wing. Good for general aviation purposes, not so good for our glider. So what I thought is we would take pieces from each of these gliders. We'll take the 4% bend here from this first one, and we'll take the 30% max camber point from this second one. And I like the idea of a thin wing. We just will make it a little bit larger so that we can fit a spar through this. And that is going to be our 4310. It has a very good flat base for, wing for wind deflection. It's got a nice smooth top for airflow. It's thin enough that the air will slip around it without too much drag. And it's thick enough that we'll be able to put a spar about maybe at this 18% and then back here at around oh, 60%, 55% in this area. And this will hold the wing to the fuselage or the body of the glider. So how do we get this onto our balsa wood? We make a template. This is a full size. As you can see, it corresponds to it very nicely right here. And then we use one of my favorite things, the safety pin. I can put this wing in using safety pins and if you look I've got some holes right here. These holes will help hold the template in place and I will use a second safety pin to punch holes along the outline. Just get a few going here. Pardon the shadow. These holes will transfer nicely into the balsa wood. Without having to trace over the pattern. And we all know that if you try to trace something, how many times do you actually make a mistake in the tracing? Here I just have to put the pin through select holes 
and this will transfer the pattern into the balsa wood very nicely. And you see how that pin is not letting this thing drift at all. Let's get just one or two more in and then we'll call it quits. There we are. And there we are. Now let's take a look at what we have. And I'll try to hold it up. Can you see the pattern that is developed from the holes in the balsa wood? We can use a sharp pencil and trace over those holes to make the pattern. And this is also making that first carving in the balsa wood so that our knife will follow that little divot that we're making right here. Can you see that? There we are. So now we have the pattern in the balsa and we'll be able to cut it out with an X-Acto knife. I'll show you what I've already done here. Here's a nice airfoil that we have done. It's already complete. Here's another one with the pattern cut out. I'll flip them so you can see. The one that I have not cut out but I've made the pattern in is a little bit larger and that's because our wing will be a little thicker at the base than at the tip and then we'll spread them out like this. So that the wing will be flat and then it will curve then it will curve in just a little bit toward the wing tip and make it a bit narrower out there to reduce the drag. So, we'll get to work on this. This is the only sheet of balsa I have right now. It's a 1 quarter inch thick sheet and I do not need this to be a quarter inch thick. So what I will do is I will cut this in half and I will get two pieces that I will be able to put into my wing once I start getting a nice long piece of balsa for the spar. All right, so it's well underway, your glider, and I think this thing is really gonna work well. All right, thanks for watching everybody. And if you can find some balsa out there, hey, let me know where it is. I'm looking at long, thin rods, maybe three feet long. I'll keep looking myself, and if you have anything, just email me and let me know. All right, thanks so much.